Hi, I'm Greg Newman from the afternoon program here on Vision. Got a Christmas story for you today. A man of few words. Obviously not a story about me. Let's get into it. Now, this is from Matthew 1 and also Matthew 2. Every year at Christmas, we hear a lot about all the many characters in the Christmas story. We hear about Mary and the shepherds. We hear about the wise men and even the donkey. But one character always seems to be tagging along. A player in the scene, but without many lines. In fact, without any lines. Any guesses as to who I'm talking about? Yeah, Joseph. Yes, if you said Joseph, you are right. Now, compared to the rest of the figures in our nativity scene, Joseph, I suppose, seems uh, you know, a bit dull. He doesn't sing any songs or bring any gifts. He just stands there in his sandals and his robe, minding his own business. Now, this picture of Joseph doesn't really tell the whole story, however, though we don't hear too much about the part that Joseph played on the night of the birth of Christ. But his faith allowed God to use him in some pretty significant ways before and after Jesus was born. You might say Joseph was a man of few words, but great acts of faith. First, we know it wasn't an accident that Joseph ended up as Jesus' earthly father. God used him to fulfill the promise that the Messiah would be a king from the line of David. Of course, Joseph didn't get to choose his ancestors, so why should he get any credit here? Well, Joseph did have to choose whether he would be Jesus' adoptive father. He could have doubted the dream, couldn't he, in which an angel of the Lord spoke to him, or he could have believed but chosen to walk away from Mary, not wanting to take on the drama of a pregnant fiancé and a baby Messiah. But he didn't doubt and he didn't turn his back on the woman and the baby God had entrusted to him. Instead... He believed God's promise and acted in faith, accepting the responsibility God had offered him to be the adoptive father of the Messiah. And Joseph wasn't done with great acts of faith. Again, an angel of the Lord spoke to him in a dream, this time telling him to flee from Herod into Egypt. Again, without even waiting for morning, Joseph chose to trust God and to act. And after Herod's death, he once more acted in faith after hearing from God in his dreams. Now, the remarkable thing is that because of Joseph's Joseph's faith, God was able to use him to bring about the fulfillment of two other prophecies God had made to the whole world about his son, that he would be called out of Egypt. We read that, Hosea 11, verse one, and that he would be called a Nazarene, Matthew 2, 23. So Joseph's actions not only protected his wife and adopted son, but also paved the way for God to fulfill prophecies spoken hundreds of years earlier. We all know that things don't always go according to our plans. Sometimes, as happened to Joseph, God himself will make it clear that you are to make a course correction. Joseph teaches us that when that happens, the right response is to trust God and obey. When we do, he will not only bless us, but also use us to fulfill his perfect plan for the world.